Hey folks, and welcome to this episode of The Grow Show. Now, The Grow Show is here to help you grow yourself, grow your business, and grow your community by sharing stories from people who have been there and done, you know, loads of really cool stuff in their lives. So today, I am joined with Dave Doolin from the best name in the world, Wonky Sheep, and we'll go into that more later on. And we are going to be talking about so much cool stuff. I can't wait to start this interview. So Dave, thank you very much for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Gary. So for people who don't know what Wonky Sheep um, does and how they can help people, tell us a little bit about it. There's actually three uh, parts to the business. Uh, there's the, one, the, the events side of it, which um, is anything for, for the public in terms of your, your stagging, stag do's, your hen do's, uh, weddings. And then from the business side, it's event support. So you've got an event, doesn't matter whether it's B2B, whether it's uh, conferences or uh, um, they? my favourite food festivals. Um, we're there on the day to help them out so you know your your event you run it how you want to do it but then we're there to help in the background so if anything comes up you know you're still focusing on the main things and then we're picking it up in the background then there's the travel again social and business element social one we're best known in wales we do the wales official uh, football fan travel uh, we also do tra- fan travel for northern ireland uh, we're starting scotland and we um, are doing wales rugby as well I, I should add and then from the business side it's your business uh, travel anything from y- your budget to uh, sorry budget travel to luxury private jets whatever in a nutshell that's what we do is a typical day at wonky sheep a uh, simple answer is that there isn't a typical day. So it, it really depends what's going on um, at the time. So, for example, during the, you know, the coronavirus pandemic and everything, it's all gone quiet on the events uh, front. Travel, you would think it has gone quiet. Uh, it went quiet on the events front because, uh, you know, there's no flying. But then it's having to deal with all the refunds and things like that and rearranging trips for next year. Mm-hmm. Um, so for example like we've got the euros coming up next year all the dates have been rearranged for that so you know there's a lot of juggling but then the busiest side now is the media media side because it doesn't matter what you're going through whether it's a normal day or coronavirus pandemic etc you've got to be communicating with your yes. with your audience with your customers but even if you've got nothing to say you still need to communicate yeah, I'm smiling because I've been, as as you know, I've been talking at different networking events about what they should be doing on social media. And one of the things is don't go quiet, you know, and just keep your customers updated. They just want reassurance that something is happening. As you said, even if it's nothing, you know, they just want to hear something from you. So I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more. No, exactly. I, I mean, for, for me, it's... The- easiest example for me to use is is the Wales football so in terms of the people who are on our mailing list and who have booked trips like now for next year it's just keeping updated with what's happening then we've got our own you know dedicated a dedicated Facebook group where you know for, for Wales fans on travel and you just post a couple of things in there and just get them interacting like I, I mean um, the, the other week it was uh, post your f- pictures from your favourite away trips you know it's, you've got hundreds of responses to that uh, on Saturday, uh, Sunday uh, BBC Wales are replaying the Euros from four years ago so it's the first game Wales played uh, in France against Slovakia just put a quick screen grab on there yep. put it in there and, and, and people love it and that's, the, uh, that's another kind of way of keeping in touch with people without actually having anything to tell them I love it and that boils down to knowing what your customer kind of wants and enjoys and engages with and then giving it to them you know it's not rocket science it's just knowing who that customer is you know if they love football or rugby and it's been shown on TV take a screen grab it's it's not rocket science but so many people don't do it but that's the thing is they, they, they there's so many people who think it's all about sell 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 and you know i've spoken to a few people as well you know you do much and it's like no but because I, I haven't got anything to do i haven't got anything to say it's like well you know there's always something you can find you know it doesn't always work you know but you've got to at least do something yeah. because if, if anyone else is doing it, say for example you're you're my competitor and you're plowing plowing stuff out when the time comes to actually needing to you know be operating again they're more likely to remember you. Exactly. Exactly. You know, Gary B says a judge on right hook, you know, it's that kind of concept where you do put stuff out there 
And do you know what? As a marketer, I get it because not everything's going to land. And the stuff that you think is going to land, sometimes might not land. But all you've done is found another way of kind of engaging with your audience that's not as effective as something else. You know, Michael Jordan says that, he, you know, well, I think he, I can't remember the exact quote, but, you know, he's the highest scorer is kind of person in the NBA. But he's missed more shots than everyone else. No one remembers the missed shots, but everyone remembers those shots that he took got. Exactly. He does. No, I love it. So I've, there's a bit of an elephant in the room, or should we say a sheep in the room? So, what, you know, the name Wonky Sheep stands out. And I know when we first met, you know, that was one of the first questions kind of I asked you, because it's just such a funky name. But where did it come from? Where did you get the inspiration to call your business Wonky Sheep? Um, it's the question I get asked probably most often, or, yeah. you know, if you're on the phone to someone, you ring someone up, yeah, it's Dave from Wonky Sheep. And if they haven't spoken to you for the first time, there's a slight pause. Yeah. Or sometimes a little giggle. Cause it's like, have they really, have I really heard that Wonky Sheep? And for me, it's the name. The name is the thing is that you'll remember, you know, it's not just a, a normal someone's name or something like that. It's a name that stands out. And I'm quite sorry to disappoint you uh, that the, the story behind it isn't that inventive. No. Uh, basically, it, there was alcohol involved. <laughs> and, you know, sometimes when, when uh, it, you have drink involved, things seem like good ideas. Uh, and this one's stuck. And like I said, people, people do remember. So, you know, that, that, that's the main thing from it. And I think when you're looking at different kind of people at uh, different events or looking on websites or, as you said, giving people a call, that kind of small details matter. And that, again, separates you from that. And it's a fun name. Your company does really cool and fun stuff. You know, so it does marry up really well. Um, did you have any other names on the table? Can no. you remember? <laughs> no, absolutely not. It was because I don't know, I don't know why... It, Again, I don't even know why it even came up. And it was just one of those things that there was, you suppose, out of the Welsh element. Yeah, I, I know with sometimes with names, you know, there's a lot of marketing and things like that going on into the branding and, you know, how will it look? How, will it, how should it sound? Should it appeal? I actually had someone who, who I was going to do it very, very early days, do a little bit of sponsorship with. And the committee turned it down because they didn't like the name. It was like, well, tough. Fair enough. You know, but no it's just a light bulb moment i suppose <laughs> brilliant and i just love the fact that actually when they turned it down they probably did you a little bit of a favor at that point because they probably were if they don't get the name don't get the kind of meaning behind well not there's no meaning behind it but didn't don't get the name then actually do you know what they're probably not the right people to sponsor you because their kind of message isn't going to be fully aligned with yours no, they, they, they're quite old school, uh, but, you know, that swings around about. These things happen. These things happen. So how did you get into the kind of the event side of it? You know, have you always been interested in events kind of from an early age or is it something that kind of got thrust upon you at, at, at a point in time? No. Um, well, basically, my main background is media, which explains the media side of the business. The event side actually started uh, at a time when I was going on stag dues and it was getting ripped off, paying 150 quid or something, you know, for one night in a Premier Inn and some activity. When you know you could do it for the same standard, but a lot less uh, without going down the, the, down the road of being in cheap, because I don't believe cheap is, is best. You know, no. with cheap, all pro problems always come along somewhere. And really, that's, that's how it started. And then it sort of evolved into, you know, doing bits of travel. And then because I go to football a lot, people say, why don't you run a football trip? So we did a couple of years ago. And then this wasn't Wales. And then started getting inquiries. And then it just sort of rolled that way yeah. uh, and then you know with travel for me for me the way i look at it same event plan it is just well you just organize it <laughs> you say, see, say, yeah. it, it sounds odd but it's like well i just do it you know to get on with it you know i i arranged my own wedding um so I, and i think that's what partly started off the event side then it's because it's like well it's not just about travel it's actual events as well so that's why we do things like weddings and helping out events um, but 
part of the problem for, for me is the events are very, very time consuming. And considering we've got three elements, that's why we do the on the day support. Mm. Because that frees up my time. But again, it also, from what I've seen from events and attending events, whatever they are, is little things can get missed. And that's what you're there for. Mm. Well, the others are focusing on it. And you know, you, you pick it up and make sure everything runs smoothly. So it's sort of falling into both of those elements and sort of then, you know, you know how some ideas sometimes start off and then it evolve and that's what's happened with them. And to be honest, I, I quite like the diversity of the three, but yeah. at the same time is you use me for, you know, to do your travel, for example, you know, and I did a good job. And then six months down the line, you've got an event you need help with. It's like, oh, they did well. I need someone to do this event. Let's go back to them. Seems an odd combination, the three, which it is in, in, in a way, but then there's also the communication element that links them. Mm. No, I get it. And I, I started stuff my social media journey by helping different events tell their story online. Um, and that was through photos, videos, live streaming, capturing those kind of smiles and talking about people who were at the event. Um, and I go into events to do that because the event organizers are too busy doing everything else. They're worried about, let's say it's an art festival with 130 exhibitors and 40,000 people over two days. They're not going to be focused on the media side of it. They're going to be focused on, are the bins okay? Are the exhibitors okay? Have everyone got power that's working fully? You know, is, are we on the right interim, um, tenery or whatever you want to call it, timetable um, for the kind of, the acts and those kind of stuff they're focused on those rather than the actual kind of fine finer details so i think anybody who's got an event bring someone like yourself in is golden because that way they can t- you can take the pressure off them and they can focus on hey sounds strange but maybe enjoying the event at different points in time well yeah there's a couple of you know decent examples i can give you know even yeah. from so if you start on things like you you know b2b b2b events or conferences things like that Sometimes I've turned up and there's no meet and greets. So you've got people walking into the reception area and it's like, right, where do I go now? And that's the first impression you're giving. Yeah. You know, and it, that's the type of thing we do. So, you know, if we're there and seeing there's nobody there, step in, you know, at least make them feel that. Because mm-hmm. as you said, the, the, the organizers are too busy doing something else. Yeah. And then, you know, then the other events, like I mentioned food festival earlier. So for example, we, a couple of incidents with one where we had the layout, the layout drawn out. And I said to them, look, you've got a gap there. You need to close that gap because people will just, you know, people don't follow circuits. Well, they do mm. now, I suppose, with one way systems <laughs> in, yeah. in the shop, but um, you know, and they'll just use that cut through and you're missing out half of the, you know, half of the rest of the event. And be another. Mm-hmm. It's okay. It's okay. Within ten minutes of that event started, it was then closed because it was clear straight away they were doing it. And then you know other things like when the event was closing, there was like, just let all the traders come on, let all the traders come on, and um, you know pile in. And it's like, well, hang on, you've still got members of the public here. You know, you've got to get yeah. them out. We're putting a we're putting a, a, a holding system in place. The tra- they can bring their trailers near to the site wait till it's cleared and we'll do them you know it's just yeah. and they all sound like little things but it all adds up you know yeah no i and do you know what i it rings true for me but that's because i've seen that side of the event side of it if you're kind of an average person going to a business expo or going to a festival um you won't see that side of it you won't see how to manage the traffic coming in and out you won't see the exhibitors kind of saying well why can't i move my van half hour before they should do they don't see that side no. of it but no. um that shows a well-run event if actually you've got those places covered on a different note obviously we are going through a period of change in terms of events and hate the whole work world um how can you see events kind of changing um over the next kind of i don't know next few months next year or so can can you predict it is there any things that you're looking at and going do you know what this could well happen I'm not going to hold you to it, don't worry. 
I, I, I'm seeing a lot more um, of virtual events starting to pop up. I don't yeah. mean just the Zoom meetings, but it's done over that. I haven't, you know, I haven't had a chance to actually, you know, proper look myself, but I have been had talks with a couple of people about doing things like that. And, and I think in the short term, that's something I think that will start happening more. I think for certain um, events, I think in the longer term, that's the way they could go. But then there's also then your main events where you can't do, you know, it doesn't, the online format doesn't work for that. And I, I, I suppose it's one of those ones where it's just going to, it's a little bit wait and see, you know, see how things mm. develop. I mean, what everyone talks about is getting a vaccine and then everything will be okay. But I was talking to someone else, the, I, th I think last weekend, it's, he he was suggesting that you know people are starting to just get used to this and learn just to deal with it and may just make it part of their normal lives yeah. so it, it is a great unknown you know yeah i know i was talking to an event company um our event, yeah, event company um, who deals with events in august and september um they made a decision to cancel it um don't go, they haven't gone online as such in terms of doing a virtual event because you know, they attract 60,000 people over the day. Doing it online will be a poor version of that event in their eyes. So therefore, they're going to just postpone it until next year. Um, but they did consider, do we do a one-way system around the event? You know, what happens if someone kind of breaks it? How are we going to apply to social distancing? And the one thing that they were kind of, the main thing that kept going around is, the what if one person broke it? What if one person broke it from out of those 60,000 people or 20,000 people who would come in because it'd be a smaller event. What if one person broke it? And then suddenly you've got a, you know, you've got a mini outbreak just there, you know, and that's the unknown bit for them. That was the unknown bit that they couldn't do. They could plan it to the nth degree and plan the event, a smaller event would take them kind of four to six weeks. Um, so they had time to put it in. But it just took one person that they're not in control of. I think that's that's difficult because people don't listen, no. you know, and uh, and there's people who think they know best as well, um, and there's the certain ways you possibly could do it, but it completely depends on what your venue is and the layout. Because one one of the ways I sort of thought is if you have a one way system, it. <laughs> It's hard to describe without sort of doing a drawing, but it's a one-way system. But, you, you, you know, you've got shelves. The shelves would be open-ended, so you haven't got a back wall to you. So if anyone wants to come back on themselves, they come back on the other side. Mm -hmm. So they're sort of divert. So it, you've still, you've got a one-way system, but it's sort of the one-way system then, if you want, has a break-off where you can go back on yourself, but through a different route. Yeah. It's still meeting people, but again, that you know, that hundred percent depends on location and size. Yeah, yeah. So this one, I think I've spoken to probably three or four different events that I'm kind of doing the social for, and each of them have got different views and different ones. So I think the, as you said, people just don't know. It isn't a known. It isn't a known. Um, so we've covered a lot in the kind of last fifteen twenty minutes that we've spoken about. Um, about events and how you got into it. If you were kind of going to give some real kind of practical tips for people organizing events, and now this could be their stag do wedding, this could be, you know, hey, a business event or even down to your communication side. You know, what kind of three main tips would you give um, to someone or a business? Well, the, this one is completely across all three and it's any business and it's do the basics right. If you've probably even guessed already, then, you know, that, that's one of the things that it's big on basics. You get those basics right and the rest should take care of itself. It sounds the old cliche, it's not. You know, there's so much, any little attention to detail, um, even beyond the basics, like if you're helping someone uh, when to be honest, you don't actually have to help help, then that is going beyond the basics. So this is points one and two. Uh, it is because you're going beyond that, but um, that's when it brings in the attention to detail, because that's what you get remembered for. So, for example, um, 
I've got an example from, we did a trip to China. We arrived there, the whole group arrived there. Somebody turned around to me and said, uh, I've got a problem. I, uh, I, I picked up the wrong suitcase, it's not mine. And my, my suitcase, I got my medication in it. And uh, I need to get my medication back. So right, so it's at the airport. Well, I think so. And we're in China. The hotel reception didn't speak English. So I tried to work with him and the receptionist to try and make a break uh, break the barrier the, the language barrier and eventually they understood that they needed to get hold of the airport they needed to find the uh, suitcase and they did find the suitcase and it was there so it all, you know all ended it well worked out, yeah. so he was very grateful for that but one other uh, person on the trip said to me you don't need you shouldn't be doing that because it's not your fault and I'm like well yeah you're right it's not my fault I didn't pick up the wrong bag but mm. if I was if she was on the other foot, I'd be very grateful to get some help, you know, from, from the people there. And yeah. again, that's, that's where you go that extra mile. So you've got getting the basics right and then going the extra mile. And I think those two go hand in hand. Yeah. And then the third thing for me, and again, this is personal. It might not work for you. It might not work for someone else, but it might work for others is trust your instincts because yep. I'm someone who had a couple of ideas um early doors was talked out of both of them both of those ideas have actually turned out to be uh, uh have developed and have you know been successful but obviously i had no involvement because i was talked out of it and then that's that's why the the uh the events and travel also started was because instinct because this time you had the same warnings but my instinct said go for it and, you know, I, I do trust my instinct. Um, and I've got a lot of examples, which um, you will find out about <laughs> soon enough. But um, for me, when I listen to my instinct, it's usually the right thing to do. And when nice. things go wrong, <laughs> it's when I'm not listening to it. Do you know what? I think that's the same for a lot of people. You know, people don't kind of think about, um, you know, having an idea and then, suddenly that's their gut kind of talking and then they think yes i'm really positive it just takes one person to say actually do you know what are you sure and then suddenly there's doubt in there whether you know and that's then that's when the gut kind of goes into the, the idea goes from the gut to the brain and then the brain starts to analyze it and sometimes actually it doesn't need that it just needs a kind of a push straight away um something that you you won't be aware of at this point because we're recording this on the 11th of June and I'm releasing it next week, um, but it will be live when it goes out, is that we are actually holding a two-day event called Grow Life. Um, I don't think we've spoken about this at all, so this is completely fresh. But um, it's going to be two days where some of the past interviews, um, interviewees for the show are going to come in and do workshops and Q&As and all that kind of stuff, all online. That's, that's something that I've been thinking about for ages. Um, however, I've put it off. I've put it off because the timing wasn't right, because the show wasn't in the right place, whatever it was. And you know what? I had the idea three weeks ago um, to do it. I said to, said to myself, it was going to be on the 15th and 16th of July. I'm going to start promoting it a month beforehand. Um, and I've now contacted all of the previous people, and I'll be contacting you separately to listen to you to see if you want to be part of it. Um, 15th, 16th of July. 15th and 16th of July. Um, yep. This is where you tell me that you're holding an event somewhere or you're doing a virtual event somewhere. 16th, um, okay. <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> but I, I decided that no one has said, are you sh- sure to do that? Even though if you go onto Facebook or LinkedIn, you see a plethora of online virtual summits, workshops, whatever it is. Do you know what? I'm going to launch it. I don't care about the competition. This is going to be something for grow. And that's something that's going to benefit the people. So my gut is rolling with this decision rather than the brain going, do you know what? There's lots of competition out there. Are you sure? Don't care about that. So I love those things. Do the basics right. I love that idea. Go above and beyond. Brilliant. And then thirdly, trust your gut. You know, there are three things that everybody can take away from it. That's brilliant. Separate to that, um, and just before we finish off, if you were going to kind of give one bit of advice, you're giving three golden tips there, don't get me wrong, but this is your final thought. Um, and this is kind of your one 
overriding kind of idea that you want to share with people. Um, so Dave, to finish off show before we do the kind of the websites and social media links, what's your final thought? Well, without sounding like a stuck record, which it is though, because it needs, you know, you need to drum it in. It mm. is the basics, absolutely the basics. And no matter what you're doing, get them right, nail them down because it will make everything else easier. And it's like building a house. You build it with poor foundations, it's going to collapse. It's the same with basics. You don't get the basics right, everything else is going to maybe start growing and then start crumbling through the gaps. So that's, that's, that's the sole thing for me. I love it. Love it. And thank you so much for your time today. If people want to figure, find out more information about you, Wonky Sheep, you know, anything else that you do, how can they? You know, are you on social? Are you on website? Throw any links out there that you fancy. Well, we've got the website, which is uh, wonkysheep.co.uk. We're on Facebook as Wonky Sheep Events and Wonky Sheep Business. LinkedIn, I'm on there, as is the business page. We're on Twitter. We're just exploring TikTok. And uh, I can't remember what the social is. Instagram. Hey, cool. So you're over, you're over the platforms. You're all over good. the platforms, something a bit different on each one. Hey, it's brilliant. I love that. As you said, the basics. Basics. So thank you so much, Dave, for your time today. Uh, let's catch up again and see how you get on. And thank you very much and take care. Thank you for having me.